Maral Kazazian. I'm on the uh, board uh, of the AFMA, Aqua Foundation for Film, Music, and Art, and I'm also the marketing director for Aqua International. Uh, yeah, Killing Ed is my film, and it's about charter schools that are operated by the Gulen movement here in the United States. A group that is this powerful in Turkey is also running the largest network of charter schools, and Americans don't know about it. The uh, filmmaker of Women of 1915 and Orphans of the Genocide. Yes. This is the Woman of 1915. But her resilience remained intact. That you pulled that brave and courageous. When you first saw the a cut, what what point did, what was the inspiring? Point in Hello, welcome to gagrule.net. We went to Hollywood. We went to see the, the actors, the filmmakers, all those documentaries, all those Armenians filmmakers and the people behind the scene. And before we go, I think credit should be given to this, this woman. You know, she's the founder of, of this uh, ARPA International Film Festival. And her name is Silva Minasian, the founder. And I mean, it's amazing. Like I, apparently, this is the 19th, says 19th uh, annual ARP International Film Festival. And it, when you go there, I mean, this is like full. If you look at this, there is a full of people in there. I mean, this is like four or five days. You have to go and see everybody there. So we we that we were there half a day. We. Uh, so we're just going to talk about the people we saw, and uh, which was, uh, it was amazing. It was amazing. It's, it, you cannot see everything in, in just half a day, one day. you got to go there, and I'm sure next year we'll be there and full four or five days, whatever it takes. But we're going to talk about those uh, people, some of the people who are behind the scene, like Moral, Moral and other people. And so we're going to show you uh, show you short uh, interview I had in there and then uh, after that we're going to show you uh, <clears throat> the full uh, interview not the movie because that's illegal and uh, really they spend hours and months and days researching everywhere and uh, so you you better go see this uh, or I'm sure they will be like on CDs and DVDs that you could buy them from Amazon and other places and and it's it's really there is so many new things I've never seen it. You know we see lots of those stuff, and this is not just Armenian women. It's like all the other was involved in 1915 other women. You know how they uh, help survive and all all that kind of things. It's it's really really I cannot express it. You know how how much new stuff you could see there. So here is my. Uh, a short interview with the people behind the scene and Bared Marunya. Maral Kazazian, I'm on the uh, board uh, of the AFMA, ARPA Foundation for Film, Music and Art, and I'm also the marketing director for ARPA International Film Festival. Anoush Kachadurian, and really I just promote good films. I've no, known this good. guy for many years, so. My name is Barrett Maronian. I'm the uh, filmmaker of Women of 1915 and Orphans of the Genocide. Bardi Kuyumjan, and uh, I work with Barrett for this movie. And some stuff. So you're, you're screening today the movie? Yes, we're screening it at 3.30 today. And, and, then, and then what happened after that? It goes to real? It goes to what, I'm sorry? What happened after you screened it today? Well, hopefully we'll get more screenings where we have a few screenings lined up. Do you and go other places? Yes, we're going actually to Toronto, uh, Pomegranate Film Festival after this, next week. We'll be screening it in uh, Canada for the first time, Canadian premiere. How long is this? The movie is about 94 minutes long. 94? Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, great. Um, uh, women of 1915, I called Barrett, I said, Barrett, we got to do something. We got to get, uh, 
get you the Armin T. Wagner Award, and we did. So he'll be receiving it today. Wow. Wow, great. We look forward to see it. Okay, thank you. So also we're going to show you at the uh, next video when we make about uh, this crowd of uh, this one. Uh, it's, it's crowds of the desert, a uh, hero's journey through the Armenian genocide. So this is really another um, movie. You got to go see it. But with next video, we're going to show you again the interview, all this uh, 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 film the directors and filmmakers and producers all that but we can't put in this because it's gonna be too long and you're gonna get bored so right now we're going to show you uh, a Carla Garabedian interviewing uh, Bared uh, Marunia and you could see how difficulty he went through how much people was involved in to make this things and as I mentioned before there is so many new stuff in this you won't even believe it and so he's this guy is amazing and he was the one who did uh, also the film uh, Orphan of the Genocide so he's, he's just amazing guy you know so you gotta see it you gotta support it and you gotta tell your friends about these things and it's really really those people put lots of lots of hours in it I, you know uh, so here we go, and you could see it, and I hope you would go there and see it. And thanks for watching, and we'll see you in next episode. Abed, what a powerful and inspirational film. Thank you so much for this um, amazing production. And uh, tomorrow, for all of, all of you who may be with us tomorrow, just and if you're thinking about joining us tomorrow, Abed is going to be presented with the Armin T. Wegener Humanitarian Award uh, for the documentary. Yeah. This is a uh, city of Los Angeles. Congratulations to Bared Maronian um, for his award from the ARPA Film Festival, the Armin T. Wegener Humanitarian Award. Here you are, Bonnie. So we are going to um, take questions from the audience, but before we do, while you think about what you'd like to ask, Bared, um, as many uh, members of the audience will know, you made Orphans of the Genocide. When did you get the idea to do Women of 1915? Uh, <clears throat> before I answer your question, Carla, I would like to thank ARPA for this honor. Uh, it's 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 an amazing thing because I would say maybe half or even more than half of the audience here had something to do with this film, and I, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Uh, if I mentioned every single name, we want to just do that, and we'll be done with our Q and A. So everybody knows who they are. Amazing, amazing work. You know, it's it, I'm, I'm like amazing with the support. Some with financial, some with uh, technical research and creative. Well, especially the song that you saw at the end, for example, the uh, the credits, beautiful, beautiful song, sang, performed by uh, Diana Sanders, and the music was done special for this film by Joe Kachadulian. I mean, it's an amazing thing, and, uh, and it happens that the, uh, the narrator of the film is Diana's sister, so it's, it's an amazing thing. Gloria Sanders did the narration. And uh, I mean, I'm just going to go with the technical thank yous just because it's, it's like I said, the rest I can't. Uh, Bobby Kyunjan, who always hides, he's somewhere hiding up there, he helped me with every aspect of this film, creatively speaking, uh, graphics and filming and ideas and this and that. So, Bobby, thank you. And he came, he's from France, by the way, Paris, and he's here. And Gloria came, came from New York for this. So, thank you all. Thank you very much. And the question was, how did I come up with this uh, Women of 1915? When I was working on Orphans of the Genocide, 
every story that I came to, you know, uh, I, I saw, um, I realized that there was always a woman behind it, you know. The kid was there, the kid made it, he was saved, but the woman saved him. And it wasn't always an Armenian woman, you know, it was most of the time a non-Armenian woman. And, uh, um, you know, of course, these women, these heroic women, the non-Armenian women, who flocked into the killing fields of the genocide, they're, they're you know, some of them died. Uh, I mean, they, they dedicated their lives to this. I, I just can't comprehend this. And then this sisterhood started between the non-Armenian women and the Armenian women, thousands of miles away. They had this comfortable life in their homes. They left everything and they did this. It's unbelievable. So I thought uh, they deserve to be put on this, under the spotlight. You know, we need to put them on the pedestal. And that's why I decided to do that. I mean, it's been, as, as we all know, over 100 years since uh, the genocide began, and there have been many other documentaries. Why do you think it's taken so long for women to be the focus? I don't want to hurt my gender, but I think we're <laughs> male chauvinists, <laughs> I think. And, uh, I don't see any other reason. It's, it's, uh, I mean, you saw these amazing women, these heroes, these heroines, I mean, and the stories that we see, we saw, and unfortunately we had to leave a lot of stories out because, not because they were not great stories, they were amazing stories, but we didn't have the material to support, you know, the, the story because we have to be, uh, you know, I always try to keep this journalistic integrity, and you know, you're in the business, you have to, I mean, we believe in our stories, they're our grandmas, they're our great grandmothers, but you know, these films are done for non-Armenian audience, and we have to back it up with documentation. And back then we didn't have iPhones, so, you know, it was difficult to find. But we were lucky enough, for example, in the case of Yapujian, we had not only one, but probably eight, nine photos with, with the gun. It's amazing, and some of them were shot in studios, so, so we only had to keep the ones that we could back up. And I think I think it's probably the case that because sexual violence was such a taboo, and that we did not talk about it in our community, let alone Americans didn't know enough about the Armenian genocide to even get into the detail of it. But within our own community, sexual violence was a taboo. We didn't want to talk about it. There were euphemisms um, for the words "bad things." Survivors never used the words. So even in the survivor testimony it's difficult to talk about it. And you start with um, Aurora's story, and that's how I first encountered you with, yeah. with this documentary. Tell us a little bit about, about that footage. Uh, well, the footage was from uh, Michael J. Hagopian, uh, had done that uh, interview with her, two interviews, three interviews actually, we used, we used uh, excerpts from two, 1975 and 1984, I believe. Uh, I mean, Again, I mean, she's an amazing woman. There was about two hours of uh, document. You know, Carla helped me to get this uh, documentation from uh, Armenian Film Foundation. And uh, I think she was, the reason I, I, she was a lead story because she was the woman of 1915 for me. She uh, embodied every single aspect that a, a woman of Armenian, a, a woman of 1915, you know, possessed. And, and it's amazing that only a year after she came here, and only four or three years after the genocide, her book was a blockbuster, her movie was a blockbuster movie, her book was a bestseller book, and it was all over the world, and now we don't know about it. I mean, for the past, uh, maybe for 50 years it was lost. And then, you know, twice you saw in the film, I don't want to tell you the same story, but you know, it took a while until we were able to find excerpts from the film, I think 18 or 20 minutes. And I thought it's an amazing thing. We should, you know, again, put her on the, on the pedestal. Even, even her family left her alone. So it's our job and you saw how we, she died. Um, I'm going to open it up to the audience in a moment, but before I do, I have to congratulate you on finding the Turkish uh, driver of Steve Jobs in Istanbul. Let's give him a hand just for that. Well, let me, you know, 
So, for about a year and a half, I was struggling with that story. I've, I've seen some, you know, documents, a, a few articles online that I knew that Steve Jobs did this trip to Turkey, but I didn't know with who. You know, I tried to contact the family. The family didn't care. Like the immediate family, the wife. Then uh, we were able to find his sister and Ani Hovannes, and if she's here, I don't know if she's here. She helped us. Is she here? No? Oh, there she is. Oh, so she, you know, you know, we started to do certain things, uh, try to find people. Then we gave, I gave up, you know, for a while, and uh, you know, then I said we need to pursue this. We need to do this. Eventually, we were able to find her sister. Uh, I mean, Steve Jobs' sister, Patty. Patty's recommendation to me was, don't do anything about my family. She, I mean. The problem was with Steve being this genius, he didn't have any social skills. She had alienated everybody around him. We know how, you know, he was a genius, he was just concentrating on that. So that's that part of the story. But coming to the, uh, the, the, the tour guide, the VIP tour guide, again, you know, I saw, saw a blog, I think it was in Turkish, that he, it was his blog, the, and he was very proud that he had you know, dealt with Steve Jobs, and when I read it, you know, I said, I need to find this guy. So when I was in Turkey, I made a few attempts, it didn't work. Uh, then I hired a Turkish guy from, from Istanbul to contact him, he wouldn't even answer. And then an Armenian guy, you know, from Istanbul, again, it didn't work out. And one day I was on my, my uh, iPhone, created by Steve Jobs, and I, I was on my Facebook and I saw him that he was on Facebook. I friended him. Three days later, he, uh, he accepted my friendship. I said, you know, I'm working on this documentary and, you know, I've read your blog. I like it. I want you to, you know, will, will you say what, will you repeat what you said in your blog on camera? He said, you know, I don't do, po I don't do politics. I said, this is not politics. You already said it. It's in your blog. I just want you to say it on, you know, film. A few days, you know, went by and uh, then he said, okay, I'll do it. So I hired, and he's in Izmir, so I hired the crew from, I couldn't go because I was busy doing other stuff. So the crew flew from Istanbul to Izmir and we had an appointment and I'm, 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 I'm kind of directing it remotely and uh, so, so the guys called me, he goes, he didn't show up. I said, okay, he was playing games with me. He said he was sick, he says. Then the next day, I said, okay, stay there one night, give him a chance, let's try again tomorrow, the next day. And the next day he showed up, and we have it. And that is the sign of a good documentary director, a good director. Persistence. Um, questions from the audience, yes. Yes. Did everybody hear that question about Aurora and Aurora's uh, buried in a public grave? Is, it, is the community doing anything about that? I mean, I heard a few things that a few people were trying to do something at least some year, but I don't know if that, that's going to happen. But I think today we have community leaders here. It should be a priority for us and do something, you know. It's, uh, she deserves to have at least a statue where she's buried. Other questions? Other questions? I have a comment, if I may. It's a beautiful film, sad but happy, and we would like to congratulate you for doing so much research, persevere, bring things together, and involve others. Hats off to you. We love you. You have done a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Again, again, I, I couldn't have done this by myself. You know, it's like, a, uh, I mean, everybody, I mean, almost everybody here is a co-producer of mine. That's how, how how I take it. Really, financially speaking, the organizations, ARS, AGBU. I mean, thank you. And the United Donors. Yes. Yes. Hi. Um, I'm Ashley.
for all of your work. Um, the personal question, piggybacking on that, I know very little about my grandmother's story. Buddy to the money, came from everything, and never talked about what happened to her. And do you have any advice for somebody who's, who really yearns to know something more about this family history than two generations? Do you have any advice on where to start and how to find my story, my grandmother's story? You know, the, the, uh, the most valuable documentation that I've found were in the uh, shoe boxes or drawers of our grandmas and great grandmas. So I recommend you look, you know, if you have access to her house or, or, or her boxes, you know, I mean, I, I recommend you do that. That's where you find that. Unfortunately, there is no documentation anywhere that such and such person was there and then went to this you know, I mean eventually made it to US I mean that's uh, it's it, there is no documentation you have to do it yourself and most of the story that you that you've seen here were not from archival centers some were most were from personal private collection they, that they didn't even know like uh, Steve Jobs case um, I was looking for one photo of Steve's mom you know, it, it took me about six months, and I found it uh, with George, the cousin, the adopted daughter, adopted cousin, George Muradian, in, again, in, he lives somewhere in San Francisco. And what we did is, he even didn't know, he dug up and he, he said, you know what, I found a whole trunk. I said, whose trunk? He said, Grandma Artinia. And they opened it up, and there, now I have that in my possession. You know, handwritten textbooks by uh, this lady, Artinia, Steve Jobs' adopted grandma. I mean, it, these are treasures. Even if you look at the, I don't have the picture, I would have shown it to you otherwise. If you look at this trunk, 110 year old trunk, it's in amazing condition. It's still there, and it belongs to Steve Jobs' grandma. I mean, that's a treasure. And we find it, it's there. And I would add to that that. Um Finding your extended family, relatives, second cousins, third cousins, doing your genealogy can also help uh, find connections. And we, there are Armenians in our, uh, many of us are doing the DNA tests and finding we're related to people um, that we never knew we were related to. And uh, some of us have even found we're actually Italian. Which is not really the case. It's really the case that the Italians are actually Armenian. But, <laughs> That's but, why I'm uh, but, to but do this. the interest yeah. in discovering our roots and our family connections, um, and when you find your relatives, ask them what they have in their attics, and all those audio tapes and VHS tapes of interviews, those all have to be saved and preserved. So um, it's been a while, it's been over 100 years, but there's still that work to be done. Other questions? Okay. One more question. Yes. David Safarian, the amazing director. Years of experience speaking. Thank you. Coming from me is a lot to me. Thank you, David. Thank you. Thank you, Barad. Let's have one more round of applause. Thank you. Again, thank you, thank you for your...